I took this dollar store vase and turned it into a Mackenzie Child dupe. Stay tuned to find out how it turned out. So I first needed to take off this rope that was glued to the top of this vase. It wasn't pretty and it did not meet up with the Mackenzie Child aesthetic. So I took all of it off and underneath there was this glue type substance. So I ended up taking a piece of sandpaper left over from a different project and I sanded off all of the hairs that were on there and as much of the glue as possible. Now I knew I was going to paint over it so I didn't want to worry too much about getting all the glue off necessarily but I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing fuzzy on the top of this face. Once I got it all smooth and there was no hair sticking out, I took a piece of masking tape to help me line up my lines with a Sharpie marker and I did a rough draft kind of and sketched out where I wanted my lines to be to match up with that quarterly check style. It didn't have to be perfect. Some of the lines I ended up messing up and they might have been slanted, but you know what? This is just a DIY craft and I wasn't gonna stress too much about it. So the materials that you're gonna need are a acrylic paint in both black and white. I used the titanium white artist loft, and then I used the carbon black. You're also gonna want a square kind of tip brush. So I got these paint brushes from Michaels along with the black and white acrylic paint. I started filling in the white checkers first just because I wanted the lightest color to be on the bottom and I filled them all in just going back and forth kind of like that Mackenzie child sweep. Once the white checkered was all filled in I gave it a couple of minutes to try and then I went back in and filled in the black. So here is what the finished look looks like with the checker. Now I did go back in and add some details with the white lines on the black checkers and a little bit of the black and the white checkers area um, just to give it that Mackenzie Child quarterly check look. Now I did come through with a gold Sharpie marker and do the outlines of this vase. There was a little bit of a raised trim on this vase, so I went ahead and outlined that with the gold Sharpie, and then I did the top of the vase and then the bottom of the vase. And now I'm gonna go put this in the greenhouse to add a little bit of whimsy and make it into a She Shed Mackenzie Child inspired greenhouse. product a little bit of stylizing I do really love this face very very cute So 
So I did want to give you guys an update on the David Austin roses that I had ordered way back in, I think, January. Um, I was super excited for them, and I put a couple of videos up of describing just the different rose varieties that we had purchased. We did two different separate orders. The first order that we did was the Queen of Sweden, if I remember correctly, and the Eustacia Vi. Both of those went into the ground and they're doing very, very well for a first year bare root rose, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Second order was two Raoul Dolls and the Generous Gardener. That order had some problems. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of what happened. So originally when I planted this, I wasn't sure if it was going to make it because it was dormant for like really, really long. But then it started to leaf out and I was excited, but then rabbits started coming and munching on it. So I put this little cage over here. Eventually I'm going to put an obelisk around it that has chicken wire on the bottom to protect it. But this is the Generous Gardener Climbing Rose some puts there finally it's first year bare root so I didn't expect too much from it I'm just glad it survived okay I'm coming over here is the other one this is the Eustacia Vi this one did really well had a beautiful flush of color we haven't had any more flowers this season yet and it is a first year bare root rose so i'm thinking next year it will have a lot more blooms and have a second showing because it is a rebloomer so this was the other another one the rowl doll and you can see it's still green it's just never bloomed or budded out so i don't know what happened but this one is dead we sent pictures to David Austin, and I'll let you know in a bit what the response was, because I have another one that didn't make it. Here is where I planted the second Raul Bell. Now, this one went brown, like, almost immediately after putting it in. Um, I used that microzyome um, stuff that they say to plant with it, and... It just, it didn't take. I think it was just a bad one to begin with. This got shipped with the other Raldell and the Generous Gardener. So I think there was something funky about that specific shipment because the three from that shipment, two of them didn't make it, the two Raldells, and the Generous Gardener really struggled in the beginning to even butt out. So what David Austin, we sent David Austin roses a um, message with the pictures of the flower or the roses and like their current state and they agreed that they absolutely did not make them make it unfortunately all the flowers had been shipped out for that season so they can't send me anything this year so if you want them to send you new roses you have to wait a whole year which was kind of a bummer because you know the first year especially for the bare root roses they don't typically look the best. They're, they're small, right? They don't flush out as much. And so now I have to wait a whole nother year just to get them in to the ground. Um, you can, I think, ask for your money back, but I really wanted the roses. So, and I knew I was just gonna have to reorder them because I couldn't find that, that specific variety at my garden center. But it's just kind of a bummer that of the five roses in total that I ordered this year from David Austin's, two of them didn't make it. Just to give you guys a little glance. Don't look at that weed. <laughs> this is the Supertunia Vista Fuchsia. Fuchsia, yes. Um, and then this is the Little Lime Punch that's just starting to flower. It's gorgeous. Here's a little update on this garden here. So these are all dahlias. I feel like they got a slow start, but you know. Um... This is my um, sunflower bed. Sunflowers are doing good. Not all the seeds made it, but I have a very active bird community over in this area, all different types of birds. And so they tend to eat a lot of the seedlings that come out of the ground, especially zinnias. 
this was a zinnia patch. I planted two entire packets of zinnia seeds and um, this is what's left. I had to use what I had left after the first round didn't make it. So obviously they're really, really behind. Um, I don't even know if they're gonna bloom this year. It's kind of disappointing to have a whole garden bed just not work out, but that's gardening for you. Um, so these are the sunflowers in the back. Um, I have two varieties. In the back, it's supposed to be taller, although this guy is just really loving this spot here. Oh, this is the back variety. Oh shoot, I gotta stake this up. All right, I'm gonna have to stake that up because they're kind of starting to fall. And I have that little trellis behind that I could stake it up. This is Solotia, the rainbow sherbet kind. Really, really pretty. And it's interplanted with straw flower. Here's a dahlia that I kind of stuck in there. Here's a straw flower that's about to come out. Ooh, I'm so excited. Some of the straw flower took off, some did not. I mean, I think we'll all even out, but this is more straw flower. See, this one got munched pretty quickly. Um, and there was a whole nother row back here, but. And then more flowers, more sunflowers. I can't wait for these to bloom. I'm gonna stake them tomorrow. That'll be my garden chore. And then the very few Cosmo seeds <laughs> that made it. Uh, something went digging in here. Lots of milkweed that's actually transplanted to another part of my garden. I have a lot of weeds. I still have to come in here and weed. And here's another rose bush. Oh, she's pretty. And then my bee balm has already kind of flowered here. And then this was a rescue butterfly bush from last year. It was basically dying in the garden center and I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it, but it came back three times as big. There's like a weed intertwined with it. I'm gonna have to come in here and pick that. I've not been keeping up on weeding. And then this beauty, she's like my pride and joy. I think she was one of the first first plant I bought for the garden way back like 10 years ago she's been transplanted twice and I don't know what specific kind she is but she's obviously a smooth hydrangea but she is she never disappoints love her and so see that's where the milkweed transplanted here is another salvia. I think this was the queen salvia from Baker Creek, where uh, Baker Creek seeds. Um, I had grown this from seed and this does reseed itself if you can see, but I love this salvia. It's just, I love the purple and it's so, like it just lasts very long, the flowers and you can see a little bit bumblebee. Bees absolutely love it. Bees love purple flowers, just period. I've come to realize. Just plant purple if you want all the pollinators. So I did do a little bit of weeding here. <laughs> but this is the um this is the Crown Princess Margaret. Now it had a beautiful flush in early summer. Gorgeous, so many flowers. I'll put up a picture. Um, this is the second year. It's been in the ground. It was not a bare root. It was um, bought from a garden center potted. So I'm waiting for a, another flush. I don't know if I'm gonna get one this year. I hope I do. We'll see. So originally it started on this trellis. Then I moved the trellis away and tried to grow it on this fence, but I need to figure out a better system for that because it didn't work and I put the trellis back. So I think next year, being the third year it will be in the ground i can give it a really good prune and start training it a little bit better and i might just move this trellis away and train it against the fence so that's the plan but i don't want to touch it now because it's very thorny and 
I've got so many cuts just from trying to trim it. And I tried to trim this piece earlier and my shears weren't working, so. I have a hydrangea back here that is loving this spot because it gets enough shade from this rose bush. This was, I think, an endless summer variety. This is a phlox that's about to bloom. This has seen better days, but these are still pretty. So because I was so bummed about the David Austin roses, um, I did go out and buy one <laughs> from my local center. Um, I haven't planted it yet. I have to plant it. She's kind of, I have to spray it down because she's looking a little, she's looking a little not so great. I might trim up the yucky stuff off, but this is called the poet's wife. So I have this mess back here. It's supposed to be a hydrangea, but it didn't quite really thrive and now there's weeds growing in there. So I'm going to rip that out, clean it up. And tomorrow I'm going to plant this here. I think the yellow flowers from the poet's wife will look really great next to these daisies. These are the proven winners, banana cream, I think. But I think these yellow daisy flowers are going to look really good next to the yellow roses. See, these are like, yeah, I'm going to have to spray it down. I'm going to clip these off. This happened to my prom princess, prom princess Margreta as well. The blooms just started to get brown before it even, before they even opened. And I think it has to do with, it's like some type of fungus, but we had a lot of rain and there's probably something going on with this thing to begin with. So I'm going to spray it down and trim it back and see if I can save it. Otherwise, it should be okay. It'll be fine. Okay, so now we are in the front of the house. And this is where the Queen of Sweden was planted. Now, initially she did really good and, and had no problems thriving, but we had a bunny come in and start munching. So we put this obelisk around it and then I covered the bottom with chicken wire. And then I spray painted it black just so you couldn't see the chicken wire and the bush would kind of show through. So we haven't had any blooms yet. I think we might be getting one right here soon, but it is the first year. And surprisingly, she's getting really tall. This is a more upright rose bush, so I'm excited. This is a shadier area. I just lost a shoe. <laughs> this is, let me zoom out. This is a shadier area, but I like that it's right in front of this window. So when the wind blows and we have the window open, we can get some smells of the Queen of Sweden. This is a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. She's just got some buds on her now. She's been in the ground for about two years. This is a My Monet Proven Winners um, Wygeal bush. And then this is just a hardy mum that we had planted. I put hardy mums in here and they do well here if you plant them early enough. This is zone 5B, Chicago area. If you plant them right when they start coming out in the stores, I'm gonna say like early, like August, they will come back for you. The other two, I'm not sure what happened, but this is like going on three years and these were super small. So this one came back and they do pretty well here. And they're like kind of a nice compact little plant until they flower in the fall. So I think I'm gonna add a lot more of those too, just so I can have flowering all throughout the season. Since this is turning into a big garden update, I wanted to show you guys my flower boxes on my deck. Um, they are coming in really nice. Originally we had started with those geraniums in the back and they just looked like they were getting fried. I had put them right here. They just didn't seem to look right and they were looking fried. So I ended up taking those out a couple weeks back and I put in this potato, a sweet potato vine. I'm gonna have to look at the variety of it. I'll put it down below. But then we have some lemon coral sedum in the front and grape punch i think it's yeah grape punch super bells here and then this is ice cherry super beania. and so that is how they are looking here's another one this one is without the lemon coral sedum now the um sweet carol 
sweet potato vine got a later start than the other ones so it's just now starting to really flourish i have to fertilize them this week and i think a couple weeks of that and they're really gonna look good here is another one with the lemon coral sedum and then lastly I think next time, next year, I'm not gonna put Superbenia in here. Maybe I'll just do another Super Tunia Vista. I'm thinking I'm really liking the fuchsia though from earlier that I showed you guys. So I might just use that in these boxes next year because I'm really impressed with the fuchsia. I like this color scheme too. It's just not exactly how I wanted it to turn out, but I'm still super happy with it. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. Make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel and following along on all of my garden journeys. Have a great day, you guys.